Are you sick of people telling you that red Kamono 6K has to be color gray in DaVinci Resolve? Today, I will show you the easiest workflow to color gray red Kamono 6K footage from this to this. In no time, with only Adobe Premiere following the official red IPP2 image pipeline. If you got a red Kamono and you want to work fast without XML everywhere, this is the must watch tutorial for you. Let's go. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up, the YouTube channel where filmmaking nerds like me and you hang out in learning the next level filmmaking in virtual reality and 360. Before we start, let's talk gears. If you are a content creator, never used red digital cinema camera before, you probably do not have the correct hardware to edit red R3D files. I would suggest you invest in a computer and a Thunderbolt 3 hard drive that has a ton of space like the G Speed Shadow XL 144TB right here. I have the Ryzen Studio 15 right here. This is the same exact laptop Red used on their DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Both Red and I am using the same laptop is because this is a monster when it comes to editing R3D footage or just anything 8K and above. For VR, we can go even 11K with the NVIDIA Quadro ITX 5000. Check my review right here if you have not already. Lastly, I would recommend to invest in a desktop like the Thread Reaper X3990 from AMD right here. Unlike DaVinci Resort, Premiere still mainly use CPU to decode R3D footage. Having a powerful CPU will really debating the R3D footage and save you more time in the creating process. Okay, now all the gear talks are out of the way and you probably went broke again and moved back to your mom's basement. Let's talk about correct back shading. So by now, you probably hear every YouTuber who got their new red kimono will tell you to black shade before shooting. But some of them actually teach you the wrong way to black shade that will ruin all your shots. If you are going to pay attention to one thing in this video, this is it. You don't black shade your camera all the time, especially for the kimono, which use a newer red sensor. And if you are going to black shade, please do not attach your lens to black shade. Your lens cap or your Canon EOS R to EF adapter does not block out the light completely, which will make your footage look like this. Okay, not the epic skater jump. Move to the left. Okay, right here. Artifacts are created by incorrect black shading. It burns into your footage. So, the correct way to black shade is to use the red sensor cap to cover your sensor completely without any light leak. Keep your camera temperature constant by not blocking the fans. So, do not cover your camera with, you know, a black cloth. Go to menu, maintenance, calibration, and do black shading. Do not move your camera when black shading and be patient. One more thing we need to talk about before the Premiere workflow. Even though Premiere is super fast for storyteller like me and you, just cut and slap on the last and you can throw it on YouTube and you can collect the views. If you are comfortable with DaVinci Resolve, I still highly recommend you learn to use Resolve to color grade. Things you will not have compared to Resolve are First, amazing color management workflow. Resolve has built-in red color management workflow, which is industry standard. Premiere do not have that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably don't need it. 
you will not have that pixel removal in raw level. You can still remove it using neat video, which I will explain later, but that pixel will not be your issue if you are shooting with Komodo and you are not in a laser party. <laughs> you will not have tetradental from official red creative LUTs. 99.9% .9 of the people out there will not notice the difference, but if you need that, use to the LUT creator for Premiere. Okay, if you understand what you are missing out using Premiere, let's talk about color grading our 3D footage. Create a 4K sequence. I shot everything in 4K 60 frames per second in the Kamono to make it look cinematic. So select all the clip and right click Modify interpretate footage. Assume this frame rate to 23.976 FPS. Now, all your footage is in slow motion. Drop just one clip in, will bring in all the clips in one single take. Very convenient. Red break down files into pieces, but Premiere is smart enough to know this all belong to one single long take. We have Kili playing the red kimono for the first time and the first thing she did is a Dutch angle. Sometimes I question myself why I hire her as my first AC. Okay, wait a minute, Hugh. I'm just getting creative. What's wrong with that? Now cut what we want and let's color grade this. Go to master under effect control, you see red source settings. Make sure your image pipeline is IPP2. Don't ask me why IPP2 is better than legacy and I don't want to bore you to death. Then make sure you check DEB. It is very confusing, but basically this setting remove all the chroma noise for you in raw level. So you don't need to denoise in the video. Let's punch in 400% and pay attention. Off, nasty chroma noise in low line. On, remove all the green and purple dots. It is night and day difference. This is one of the biggest complaints from Blackmagic and Zcam user. Well, basically they did not turn this on or they just judged the raw camera sensor data. If your scene is well lit though, then you can leave this off to have more film look. It is totally up to you, the beauty of using a red. The noise slider is not going to work as this is the legacy feature. You don't need it for Komono as it is not as noisy if you expose correctly when filming. The Bayer detail always set to high unless you have a really slow computer. Please refer to the first part of this video to upgrade your computer first. You can change your ISO and color temperature in post because this is raw, but please do not rely on your post magic. Always expose your shot correctly and use your camera setting. If you don't have it, hire a better DP instead of this one, Dutch angle. Uh. Now the most important part is to stay in IPP2 as long as you can in your coloring pipeline. What does that mean? In output transform settings, Set your color space to red, white, gamma RGB and gamma curve to log 3G10. Yes, your footage look like but it is okay because we are going to learn how to grade correctly. I'm trying to save you time by skipping the reason, so please follow along step by step. Comment below if you want to learn why I have this saying or just read the official guide from red right here. Now drop in some adjustment layer by clicking the new layer icon and select the adjustment layer. There are two ways to grade your footage. You can stack lumetri color effects or you can stack adjustment layer. I am old school and do not trust Premiere. So I am going to stack adjustment layers. This is the exact same concept of no base color grading from DaVinci Resolve. We just use layer so it is easier to understand. To start in Resolve, with 4 node color grading, I drop in 4 adjustment layers. You can just all drag on the PC to duplicate the adjustment layer 4 times. Open Lumetri Color on the top layer of the adjustment layer just to emphasize the top layer, not the bottom layer. 
you want to load in our final conversion lot to see Rack 709 or Rack 2020 on your basic adjustment. This helps to be the last path of the coloring pipeline and all creative coloring grading has to be done before it. You can download this conversion lot free on Red official website. I will provide the link down below in the description. I shot a medium contract and soft highlight roll off in the camera. So I select this one. It looked good already. Great job. Okay, let's explain why I have four adjustment layers as not everyone come from a DaVinci Resolve color grading background. So basic color grading, we have our adjustment layer one for primary color correction. Yes color correction, not color grading. You need to correct your color if you have an AC light Dutch angle. You, you're just picking on me now. Why, why does the Dutch angle matter when it comes to color? Catch me outside, how about that? Adjustment layer two reserved for creative LUTs. Red provides 28 amazing professional creative LUTs designed by famous colorists from my Hunter and Gone Girl. Thank you, Red. One thing I love about the Red ecosystem is that professional resources like this. So please use it to your advantage. All these LUTs are in the IPP too, so you can use them safely. If you retain all the information captured by the Red Kimono right here without clipping anything. The third layer is for secondary color grading and the last layer, as explained above earlier, for conversion to Red 709. So after applying the conversion LUT from Red, the second step for me is usually applying the Creative LUT from Red. Go to Lumetri under Creative tab, select the LUT you want. I will provide the Red Creative LUT download link down below in this video description. I personally really like the super color as it make everything pop on YouTube. It is like a great LUT for YouTubers or content creators that compete viewer attention on the internet. Human nature attract to colorful things, so make the color pop is a great way for online content. Please feel free to play it around to find your own look. Now let's do our primary color correction. This shot is too dark during sunset. Instead of bombing up the exposure in Lumetri, we are going to go back to the source footage, master, and then increase the exposure non-destructively. The benefit of shooting in R3D instead of ProRes, ISO can be changed in post. Amazing! Up the ISO from 640 to 1000. Go back to your sequence. Wow, amazing. Pay attention to this soft highlight roll off right here. The beauty of red. You are going to love it if you are obsessed with cinematic look. On the primary adjustment layer one, I am going to increase the shadow a bit and lower the highlight just a little to bring back Kitty's confusing face. I know the red kimono menu is confusing for an RE shooter. She probably hated it and sabotaged the footage with a Dutch angle. Uh, why do you hate my Dutch angle so much? Okay, I was just pretending like I was shooting a rap video, okay? Okay, now moving on to secondary color correction where you want to use mask to mask out stuff to help selective color grading to do any detail adjustment after the creative LUT. Like here, we can mask out Kitty's face using the mask too under Lumetri color. Give it a big feather roll off, then we can pull down the color wheel from red to green to make Kitty look like a scary zombie, like in Zombieland. Why? Why? <laughs> okay, I'm just joking here. Don't do that. Go to your curve. Under hue saturation curve, use the color pickup tool to select her jacket. Go ahead and pull the saturation as her jacket is actually white, not bluish teal. Next, we want to bring out the golden hour sunset color. So we select the sky orange and increase the saturation like that. But 
we choose her face to take out some red so her skin tone look more natural. It is how you do a basic color grading with red Komodo inside Adobe Premiere. If you have a signature LUT that give you that unique look, you add one more adjustment layer on top of everything and add that signature LUT right there. The reason why is your common LUT brought from the internet, they are sRGB or red 709. So if you apply it before the conversion LUT, everything will go crazy. As though LUT does not understand red IPP2. So you apply after the red 709 conversion. So go ahead, if you have not already, to download my signature LUT pack right here and it's completely free from this video. Get the teal and orange Rack 709 LUT and apply it on a new adjustment layer on top of everything. Just to show you a different workflow, we will use Color Restart from Red Giant. Load in a LUT here and reduce the strength to 50%. It looks amazing. If you don't like the film grain look from the red in low light, I can denoise it using neat video. I have a tutorial right here already, so go ahead and check that out and remove the noise for your red kimono right here. Lastly is export. I don't use the premiere default export option as they are kind of strange for red or black magic raw footage. I use a third party plugin called After Codex, which it used FMPEG. It allowed me to use full range instead of TV range of my final render. So I get true black and true white instead of grayish black. Also, I can control the render quality to make my footage look cinematic. You did so much work and it will be a shame if you don't care about the final rendering pipeline to get the best looking footage onto the internet. Another quick tip to end this video, if you don't have a powerful computer, CPU, GPU like I mentioned before, the A3390 from AMD or the Razer Studio 15, you should create proxy in Premiere. Red already tell you how to create proxy in Student X Pro, but I gotta show you the easiest way to create proxy just right inside Premiere. Right click, go ahead and review in project. So this is the file, right? So it's a lot of them, but you only need to just create a proxy right here. And right here, I usually just use a ProRes low resolution proxy. That's good enough. Uh, and just hit OK. And look at that, uh, now we are having a proxy creating inside media encoder and you can kill everything up and just do it, it's really fast actually, see that really really fast. And now go ahead and turn on the toggle proxy button and now you get yourself a proxy, it's that easy. Okay, that is all I am going to show you today. Same principle apply if you are shooting for VR 180 video using a red kimono. In fact, that is my next tutorial shooting VR one of the using two red kimono. I will compare red kimono with black Magic 6K and Zcam E2. This will help you to decide if you want to go with the kimono or stay with black Magic or Zcam. And we will discuss the IPD argument and why 3D is cool or suck. Depend on your perspective. If you want to level up your game with immersive storytelling, make great looking content for Ocular Crest right here. Or just some more red kimono tips and tricks. Don't forget to subscribe to this awesome channel. Hit the notification bell and I will see you all next time. Ciao.